missed them both. The final heave from midcourt and beyond. Many thanks for staying right here. It is on Sports Central here on Spectrum Television. And uh, Noah Monday joins the conversation this morning. Well, um, talk about exportation. Um, Nigeria exports crude oil, right? So, uh, that's Nigeria's biggest export. And uh, this man here is Akwaibom's biggest sports export to the world. Noah Monday joins the conversation this morning. Uh, good to have you join us. Yeah, good to be here. It's my <laughs> absolute pleasure to be here. Uh, this man is one of the finest to do this business in this part of the world where we share a very similar dream and that will be the story for another day. <laughs> <laughs> but for now, let's get talking. Uh, you know, when Super Eagles um, opened camp yesterday in Abuja and of course, we understand three players uh, have already hit camp. Um, Oli Sandad, the first from Orlando Pirates in South Africa to hit camp and then uh, Taiwo Wuni uh, alongside uh, the man from Yimba, John Noble, uh, must be exciting. Retrospectively, um, first of all, I'd like to get your impression on the Super Eagles release, 28-man score release for Africa in 2021. There were not necessarily uh, surprises because uh, you, you look at that squad and obviously it picks itself because it, the usual suspects are there. You know, there are questions about a few players in that squad, uh, if questions about uh, players who were dropped and players who were picked because, I mean, I mean, um, you know, sometimes you think people think you're you're being vindictive, but I do not understand why Musa is still playing for the national team because it's a skipper of the side. You know, yeah, he is, but I don't think he he brings much difference into that team. In because when you look at players, when you're going to a tournament, you're, you're looking at people who can potentially be match winners. You know, game changers, jokers off the bench. I don't think he's any of that anymore. Mm. He used to be. I think he's seen better days. But um, Musa is, is a decent player. He's always been a decent player. He's not yeah. someone who would score 10 goals in the tournament, but yeah. he's a good footballer. Alex Iwobi hasn't played any kind of football. I mean, he's been sitting on the bench on the Everton, in the Everton side. And maybe, maybe reputation is working for him because national team-wise, I don't think he does enough. Mm. I don't think he does enough. So there are a few questions. And, and you know, this business is a business of opinion. And yeah. people will always make opinions about who should be in the squad, who shouldn't be in the squad. So yeah. um, if, if the manager thinks uh, uh, that this squad can take us to the Africa Cup of Nations, I'm not expecting Nigeria to win the Africa Cup of Nations. And mm. I've, I've, I've watched football for so long, Bright, to understand that when you go to the tournament, there are lots of factors. There are lots of factors that can make you win. And mm. having a good squad is one of them. I don't yeah. think we have the best squad on the African continent. Guess what? We have the best players on the African continent. We don't have the best squad. Yeah, you know, and that's a massive contrast. You know, when I say that individually, individually, um, we we've have got, the, we've best, got the, quality, the best players. But as a unit, you as can't a unit, quite because see. you know, I, I was, I've said this on different platforms. Most yeah. of our players will struggle to play for Senegal. Mm. Will struggle to play for Tunisia, Morocco, some of these teams because mm. they have better structures mm. as a team. We have better players, mm. but they have better structures. And when you go to tournaments. Individuals don't win your tournaments. Mm. I mean, you can take, I mean, even individuals win people tournament. Messi would win every tournament he plays. Mm. So individuals doesn't win your tournament. Ronaldo win every tournament with Portugal. But it doesn't happen because you need the structure of a team. You mm. need players who are in sync with what the manager wants to do. And you need a manager to have a clear, defined plan to how to win a tournament. So, yeah. <sighs> and now, you know, you, you're talking about um, a couple of players who basically for you have no business to the national team. Well, oh, Ahmed Musa is still just 28. Bits it's, my it's, it's not the age. Yeah, yeah. He is one of those early bloomers. You know, started quite, you know, what quite young. Scored lots of goals for for yeah. Pillars, You know, yeah. then went to I think VVV Venlo, Venlo, Venlo and the then from from there, you know, came to Leicester. It, it didn't quite work. You know, one thing Musa has, and which has really gone for him throughout his career, has been uh, his pace, his yeah. ability to stretch defenses, get him behind them. But, but it looks like he's lost that over uh, the years. Obviously, obviously, you know, over the years he's lost a yard of pace or two, and yeah. the, which is why, because that would be a weapon if you if you still have the legs to, you know, play on the shoulder, getting behind defenses. You yeah. know, you would think, okay, th that's a weapon. That's something we can we can build on. But I don't think he's that player anymore. To be yeah. honest, I don't I, think he's that player anymore. No, but very quickly, before we leave um, your impression of the uh, squad for Africa next year. 
I said, oh, Dion Judy Gala is returning to the national mm. team. Mm. And, um, you know, uh, St. Tom's walking across the globe, you know, opinion divided as to whether it still has business as a national team or not. When you put that side by side with the array of young and emerging talent who have strikers particularly, you go with the likes of Taiwo Wuni, Emmanuel Dennis, who talking Sadiq Koma, Paulo Nwachu, Cyril Dessis can't even make the national team mm. score. Or do you to return to the national team quickly? Brian, like I said earlier, it, it's, it's a matter of opinions. Yeah. You know, I don't think that Odion Gallo has a lot to offer to the national team. But I do think he has a lot to offer to the younger strikers. Yeah. And in a 28-man squad, I, I won't begrudge the manager so much. You know, in a 28-man team, I won't begrudge the manager take, taking Odion Gallo to, to the nation's squad because yeah. you have to play 11 per time, yeah. you know. So... It doesn't necessarily mean he will play all the time, but I'm sure people like Tyro Wuni, I'm sure people like Manuel Dennis would be able to yeah. to take advantage of his, his world and, of experience. And Victor Simon, fits. You know, of, of course, Victor Simon, because Odeon Gallo, you can criticize him all you want, but every time he played for Nigeria, he delivered. Most of the times, you yeah. know, he delivered. You know, scored lots of goals at the Africa Cup of Nations, scored lots of goals at the qualifiers. So he should be there you know for a 28 man squad you never know you know when COVID times very strange times mm. you never know it's a someone you should have around the at least he has got experience you know the only slight downer is the fact that he's playing in a less uh competitive, competitive. league yeah. which is a problem because when you when you do not play in a competitive league at mm. some i just feel it takes something away from you All right now um Let's leave the national team set up, the build up, um, there are lots of complexities earlier um, when the Aqua United had the official you know, reception ahead of the new season. Majumel Binik was in town and he said Uyo would be mm -hmm. you know, where the Super Eagles would be opening camp and the sport minister Son Didare had another idea entirely and now they're camping in Abuja against Uyo. Um, Raw talked about it. You know, time and time again, Uyo is one of the best destinations because you look at away from the busy center. Because you talked about the fact that when players hit camp, you know, we're talking family members waiting, mm. friends waiting, and that could be distracting mm. for for these players. But you know, you you have you know a destination away from the busy city center, and the players are a lot more calm, cool, calm, and of course uh, keep the eyes on the prize. Um, is it political? We understand the Mushina mm. Biola Stadium, which is open, then, you know, they, they brought in the presidential cup for something new. Mokachi did that. Uh, they, they're busy and, of course, looking to get in action at the Mushina Biola National Stadium in Buja. But is that the best you can get when you look at such a big tournament and the ambitions of Nigerians heading to Cameroon? So I said earlier that, you know, to, to win a tournament, there are lots of factors that can go against you. Mm. And... The, the lack of organization, the, the lack of well laid out structures with, with our football, it's, it's a big issue and take nothing away from it. We make political decisions when we should be making football decisions because I personally feel that in the interest of the players, you know, when you go to the World Cup, the, 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 the juggernauts, the, the, the protagonists are the footballers, the players and what you need to do is they have to be the ones deciding where they want to be. Yeah. And if Gunnar Ross' uh, um, words or statements or, uh, is taken seriously, you would have the feeling that the players enjoy staying in a place like you. And when you say that, people say, oh, because he's from a quiet boom. Mm. You know, I live in Lagos and I understand the issues of Super Eagles playing in Lagos. It is absolute shambles. Mm. It is quite difficult, you know, the traffic situation. For instance, the last time the, the Super Eagles were in Lagos, they're playing in, 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 at the Teslim Balogun Stadium in Suruleri mm. and it's camping in VI. And if you live in Lagos, you know, trying to access this place, mm -hmm. it's quite difficult during, you know, particularly the rush hour time, morning time and the evening time where they train. Mm. So the, these are some of the issues that uh, the people who run our football, the powers that be, you know, I've just chosen, chosen to look away from because I, I just feel that at the risk of, sounding uh, uh, um, making an allegation I just I just get the feeling that these guys are just making our football uh, look like you know it's some sort of business you know where you put it to the highest bidder you know the guy who's giving you more, more money we can take 
Bright, we've heard that football was supposed to be taken to the Super Eagles were supposed to be going to the Lekon Salami Stadium in Ibadan. Yeah. As I saw clips of that uh, Kwa United going to play there, mm. that pitch is like a rice plantation. <laughs> Absolute <laughs> shocker. And then we're, we're talking about taking our football there. Mm. So, so these are some of the issues because if players are, you know, football is more psychological than we think. Mm. If players are uncomfortable going into tournaments, they can't win it, no matter how good you are. Mm. Brian James, the working con you, you, you work here and the conditions have to be conducive for you to be able to do well. You know, so if your mindset isn't great going into a tournament as big as the Africa Cup of Nations, how do you expect the players to go? You know, someone said Africa will win the World Cup one day. I said it's never going to happen. Do you know why it won't, it won't happen? Tell me. Because we'll go to the World Cup. The players will play the first game. They'll win the first game. In the second game, the, 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 the federation or the association will come out and say, we don't have money to pay you. <laughs> and they will start fighting. <laughs> and that's how the momentum... And it's not about money. People think it's about money. Mm. It's not about money. Because we have to be in sync. We're going to a tournament. We have some agreements. We have some deliverables. We have some, you know, things that shouldn't be touched. I play for the nation. This is my entitlement for playing for the nation. Mm -hmm. And then you tell me after playing a, a, a match, ah, we don't have money to pay you. Sounds you like upset, a joke. You upset the mind of the player, not the money. Because mm -hmm. these players are very wealthy. Yeah. It's not the money. Yeah, it's it's just, just, it just sounds like you know, you're it's, not it's serious about getting at all. A deal. You know, it, it sounds like you know, um, what we see you know, very in society. You know, the politician comes out to tell you that there's no money to pay salaries. Mm. But does he get his deal? Of, of course. To, of how, course. So how do you raise like, that? <laughs> like, your salary is being paid at, yeah. and when, as I went to you. Yeah. But the player's money is not available. No. So, 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 Bright, these are some of the issues. I can tell you, yeah. I can tell you that there's a lot of politics behind where the Super Eagles play, where the Super Eagles come. There's a lot of politics because the players love it here. And Bright, I, I know people who are close to some of these players and they will tell you that the players love it here. And the reasons are not far-fetched. You, you've, you've outlined some of them. You know, the fact that Bright is crazy. The Super Eagles were camping at an at eco hotel in VI. You see the crowd there. You see people go there and hang out mm -hmm. and just hang around. Family members, yeah. friends. Yeah. And it's so much distraction. How much more going into an Africa community? Abuja is a big city. Brilliant place. Absolutely serene. Fantastic. But it's not just the right place for building up to a tournament like that. I know if COVID wasn't. Uh, uh, in, in in our lives, possibly they would have been coming abroad, coming abroad, which would be a lot yeah, better. Yeah, a lot more easier. <laughs> you know, a lot easier because right. family members are yeah. there. You know, you know what, let's leave the for a bit. Um, <laughs> yesterday, the biggest story that broke from Nigeria was uh, the appointment of Jose Picero as a new national head coach of the Super Eagles of Nigeria. Now, n not many know this figure mm. um, in football. It's not one of those biggest names. Uh, but, of course, um, the fans have lots of questions. So, the big question now is, who is Jose Picero? Yeah, big question. Uh, because I, I was going through his CV and, you know, honestly, he's, he's not the best of CVs. You know, he's not not a bad manager because he's coached Porto, he's coached Sporting Lisbon, he's coached Sporting Braga. And these are some of the biggest clubs, of, um, you know, part of the biggest clubs in, in Portuguese football. And mm. when you coach these teams, you know, of course, there's something about you. But my, my real worry, I was going through CV and I was taking time to see the clubs, the, the countries he has coached, and I saw something I didn't quite like, the fact that he doesn't stay long in those jobs. Mm. Some of those jobs were six months, some of them were one year and a half, some year was two years. At the start, I think he had a club, he stayed three years. I don't like that. I don't mm. quite like that because w when you have a manager, it's, it's not a stopgap. It's not, it's not come and fix things, you know. It's not, we, our football is not necessarily broken. Yeah. What we need is we need someone to come and take it to the next level. Yeah. You know, someone who can come. Well, at this stage, because of the... I think most of our players are average, but they are very talented. Mm. You know, their output is average, but the, the ability is good. They've yeah. got ability, but... So when you need a manager to just come and unlock some of these players, you need some managers to come and get these players to take it up a notch a little bit. And... Is it a kind of manager? And I'm not sure I want to, no, you to know, say straight away he's not. No, th that's what, you know, I've got my concerns. Uh, as many, uh, like many Nigerians, or as many Nigerians now, 
you took out Ghana Raw, one of the biggest issues was this tactical ineptitude, mm. inefficiencies. No, so you bring in Jose Picero. Is he a notch higher? You, you talked about the fact that um, you know, you're going for the best. Mm. You know, we talked about the fact that we need to take our football to the next level. You think Jose Picero, looking at his profile and, of course, talking to a couple you know, who followed his development over the years, is he the best Nigeria could get at this point in time? Maybe he's not the best Nigeria could get, but probably he's the best our finances could get. <laughs> because, <laughs> you know, because they're, they're top managers out there. I, I made an instance. I said, if someone like Ronald Koeman yeah. were to come to Nigeria, forget about what happened at Barcelona, mm. he will improve our team. That was a top manager. A top manager, a, someone who's got a great CV, was doing well with the with the Orania, the Dutch national team. I don't know who told him to go to Barcelona, <laughs> but that's a top manager out there, yeah. you know. But we can't pay him. Let, let's be honest. Our, our financial constraints means we can't pay a manager like like Ronald Koeman. So when we say it's the best, I don't think oh, Jose Pizarro is the best. I don't think he is, you know. But I think he's a good manager. What he needs to do is, you know, bright. We talk about our football, and one of the biggest criticisms we gave Gunnar Raw was the fact that we're going into games and playing backs against the wall, against teams that we should be absolutely running through. Mm. And this is what we want the new manager to do. Get some playing style. Get some system that works for the players. We've got very speedy players. You know, one of the things we don't have is a number 10, a playmaker. We don't have... I think Alexi Wobi has tried to be that, but mm. he's, he's not in him. I'm sorry. I've, I've seen him many times, and I think he's a good footballer. He thinks he's a number 10. I think he's a winger. <laughs> you know, I think he's a winger. Well, he's he a, thinks he's his uncle, J.J. Okocha. Yeah, he thinks he's J.J. Okocha, but he's not. He's a good winger. He's someone who should be on the flank mm. and have a go at, at, at fullbacks. I, I like him, but he's not a number 10. And because we don't have a number 10, and so, most times when you don't have a number 10, it's very difficult because you want to play through the middle. Mm. But we can't do that. Now, when you talk about playing you know, through the middle, uh, talk to us about what you think um, Kelly Team Wack mm. the Golden Eagle star brings to that national team set. Yeah, I've, I've, I've always been someone who's spoken very highly of, 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 of Kelly Team Wakali. Mm. The only problem with Kelly Team is the inconsistency at club level, yeah. you know, because you want to settle at a particular place and play for a long time. As long as you're having game time, you yeah. know, you mustn't be in the biggest of leagues, you know. Yeah. The Spanish second division is a very competitive league, you mm. know, so to, he's at Huesca, you know, yeah. he's playing regularly and it's good. I like him. He looks like the closest thing to what we need, you know, mm. because, you know, now the, the number 10 position, the playmaker role has, has evolved. You know, people yeah. now judge playmakers from, you know, he's smashing balls into the top corners, yeah. you know, he's crosses that. No, 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 no. A playmaker is just simply, it's just like the word, it's a playmaker. Mm. Someone who makes play, mm. you know. Kelechi Wakali is that kind of player, you know. He's going to drop deep, he's going to get on the ball, he's going to, you know, do those Big give and go. Exactly. That's exactly what we need and is the manager going to throw him straight into the team i'm not quite sure because a lot of egos in that dressing room i can tell you yeah i don't think alex Iwobi will feel good yeah <laughs> if you play collection wakali ahead at of his him. expense you know i don't think he will feel good so yeah. it's a tough job for the manager and i don't envy a at this yeah, time well, i don't i don't envy him at all it, it clearly can't be about sentiment it's got to be about yeah, who exactly gets, who gets the job done exactly i totally agree it has to be about who works for the system better yeah because when you have Moses Simon on the flank, you have speedy players on the yeah, flank. Samuel Chukwe, 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 Samuel Chukwe, you have the Juke, I like it, Juke yeah, a lot. Yeah. You have players like that. You need a, a guy who can, you know, be able to connect play them the in. dots together. Exactly. Play them in, you know, because when you have a, a number 10 who can draw people to himself, who has the ability to eliminate players in very key position, which some I think it will be you know, I see him. I saw him at a, at Arsenal, and I thought, "Wow, what a footballer!" Mm. You know, but I just think that he has stored in his career a little bit. But Bright, we can talk about this for a long yeah, time. Yeah, we will. <laughs> but now, time is not a friend, so um, we'll quickly drop by the Premier League and talk about the big stories from there. Chelsea.